All right. Hello, my name is Tracy Cheek. I'm with Optimize Marketing, and I'm going to talk today about um, developing a marketing strategy for your business. We use Lego Series Play method to um, develop strategy. I've done demos before. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. It's really hard to understand, so a lot of my demonstration will involve Lego. We don't have to use Lego, but I hope that I demonstrate why it's so powerful and why we love it. Um, and then this is really just kind of to help you guys develop your own strategy. Ooh, I got it right. Okay, so I like to start with the elevator pitch. I work with a lot of small business owners, and I find that they have a really hard time explaining what they do in simple terms. Tend to go down the weeds of, well, this is what we used to do, or this is how it used to be, or this is what, why we're better than our competitors, and they weave around, and then prospects just kind of zone out, and they're like, I don't know what we're talking about. And it, they don't always care kind of what you're saying, right? So it's not a sales pitch, it's really meant to be kind of, if you use a fishing analogy, like a, uh, it's like a pitch, right? And so it's like the worm on the hook, it's the bait. So you put it out and you see if people bite. If they bite, then you can talk to them more and you can go a little bit more in detail about what you do. But for now, it's just kind of a very simplified version of what you do. So I like to ask the question, can you explain to a nine-year-old what you do? And explaining to a nine-year-old is not about baby talking, right? Nine-year-olds are in fourth grade. They're pretty smart these days. And so it's really just about simplify, simplify, simplify your message. So as an example, I will show you kind of what I've come up with Lego Serious Play. Um, what is kind of out there now is something about a facilitated method, communication, problem solving, something and something and something. And I'm like, okay, you lost me at facilitated method. So I kind of tried to do a simplified, simplified version of what Lego Serious Play is. It's a way to get ideas on the table so they can be better seen, understood, heard, and discussed and resolved. So simplify. What is Lego Serious Play? It's a method to get ideas in the open so they can be better understood. Period. So that's our little model to show you in three dimensions how that how that looks. Um, so that's kind of your elevator pitch. Just simplify, simplify, so you can just be really clear to a prospective client what you do. Value proposition. This is an overarching benefit. What benefit does your product or service provide to the marketplace. And it's not a long list of benefits, it's an overarching. There should be some overarching benefit. If you are in what we call a blue ocean, right, you know what your benefit is. But if you're in a crowded space, what, what, do you, what makes you better than the rest, right? And if you can sum it up in a simple statement, I like this image because if you can figure out, the question I like to ask is what would be missing from the marketplace if your services were not, no longer there or your product. So if you can figure out what would be missing, that's your value proposition, right? If you can really sum that up into a simple statement. So we like Lego Serious Play because it brings clarity on what your business needs to grow. For us, with business owners, clarity on what your business needs. I think Lego Serious Play as a whole does a phenomenal job of just bringing clarity to what's going on. Putting it all on the table in three dimensions brings a level of clarity that you don't get in other places. So this is my clarity. That's my value proposition for LEGO Series Play. So again, what would be missing from the marketplace if your product or service were no longer available? If you can sum that up in 10 seconds or left, you've got a really powerful uh, value proposition. Now we're gonna talk about your ideal prospects. Look, I'm going really high level and really fast. We can dive in a ton to any and all of these, and there's a whole lot more we can do. But I have two ideal prospects. If you can define characteristics, we've obviously got the demographics, right? Age, sex, size, all that kind of stuff of what we call demographics. And those are good for targeting on social media or in your advertising efforts. But you also have what we call this psychographic. What's going on in their heads? What, what emotions are they feeling? So what are some characteristics of your ideal prospect? This is my favorite. This is my ideal prospect. A business owner, hair on fire, making decisions on the fly, trying to get the company off the ground, keep it in the air, prevent it from crash landing. I don't know if anybody relates to that. I am my own ideal prospect. This is one of my ideal prospects. 
my small business owner ideal prospect. My other ideal prospect is a member organization director. We'll call her an executive director. And I'm going to be very stereotypical on my pronouns. My business owner is going to be a he. My executive director is going to be a she. It doesn't fall on those lines. It just makes it easy. She is in the weeds, stuck in the weeds, running the day to day. She's got board members and volunteers, but they're only really halfway there. The hearts are in it, but their heads are not, namely because her board and volunteers are made up of these people. <laughs> And so she is really just kind of frustrated and fed up because the volunteers cannot help her carry the load the way she needs to. So that's my ideal prospect. Again, so, okay, Eddie the entrepreneur, we like to, I like to put names on them. That's Eddie the entrepreneur. This is Ellie the executive director. These are my two ideal prospects. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, I like to think this is a golden nugget. If you can identify a nightmare client. Um, firing clients, I believe, is a luxury, and a luxury a lot of business owners don't have yet. If you can get stable enough in your business, you can fire the, co the clients that are causing you a lot of problems, you're in a good place. If you can figure out what some of the characteristics are of a nightmare client, you can maybe identify them early on and not bring them on board in the first place. Nightmare clients can be very difficult for not just you, but your whole team, right? This is my nightmare client. I wanted to represent it has a big head, kind of a big ego, transparency a little bit, but it's really red. So kind of angry, always right, always knows what he wants. No matter how hard you try, you never get it right. So he kind of engages in this crazy making feeling, right? You're just kind of going crazy. <laughs> what I don't represent in this for us, our nightmare client kind of wants us to be a marketing secretary. He knows best. He knows what's supposed to happen. He just wants you to do what he tells you. He doesn't want you to think or have any ideas for yourself. And no matter how hard you try, it's not really good enough, right? So we're going to put him way over here because we don't really want him on our board. But he's good to identify and stay away from if you can. So I don't know if a lot of people talk about identifying your nightmare client, but it's good to know that kind of stuff. I like to talk to people about what you're really selling. Most people are selling, you know, uh, pain relief, aspirin, Tylenol, that kind of stuff. Peace of mind, which is often insurance products. You know, you're in good hands with Allstate or like a good neighbor, we'll be there. So you have this fear of some catastrophic event happening. We're going to sell you some peace of mind so you can sleep well at night. Status, I love the status. That's for me about people buying things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. And people spend a lot of money on the status category. Those are the big name brands, you know, Rolls Royce, uh, which I shouldn't say Rolls Royce, um, Tag. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a name brand shopper, so it's hard for Michael Kors, all that kind of stuff. If you put a name on it and it increases the price by 20 times, then you're buying status. And then entertainment. A lot of people put entertainment in there. For me, that's kind of pain relief. It's an escape from reality. I want to go be entertained, right? So at the base of most of most people's buying decisions is still some kind of a pain point. They're, they're driven by a pain point. Even, you know, retail therapy is still escape, right? I'm going to go shopping to make myself feel better because I need, I need, I had a bad day. So if you can figure out what people's pain points are, then you are, um, you can talk to them better about their needs. So. Again, three dimensions, my pain points. Four, okay, you've got up to your eyes in work you can't handle, fed up, or being one-upped by your competition. This is leaving money on the floor, and this is undiscovered revenue streams. If I open that, some stuff will fall out, which is good, I mean, I guess, right? So undiscovered revenue streams. These are many pain points that both of my clients' bases are dealing with, right? My website talks, the homepage really talks to this guy. So you, we've got our pain points right here on the home page. Up to your eyes in marketing you can't handle, fed up with lack of results, and being one-upped by the competition. Now, what you can do if you really get into a LEGO series play strategy session is you can arrange your ideal clients here in a way that makes sense, and you can take these connector pieces and you can start connecting the pain points. This guy has, he's up to his eyes, she's up to her eyes in the weeds, so you can connect these. 
And it's this three-dimensional method of really connecting your pain points to your ideal prospects is very powerful. This guy is leaving money on the floor and has undiscovered revenue, but he doesn't care because he can't pick it up because if he does, it puts more work on his plate. She needs access to this money because she needs to hire help and she only thinks the way she can hi uh, uh, raise money is to increase member dues and she doesn't want to do it. So she needs help discovering ways to raise money, right? So you can connect these. So what's interesting about this method is uh, the, other, the other question you can ask, and I don't have it on this board, is if there is a negative emotion that your prospects feel when they talk about your product or service or when you talk to them about your product and service. So for me, I have a lot of people who have been burned by bad marketing spent a lot of money and gotten no results. So I have, there's a really negative image with marketing. And I have to overcome that in a lot of what I do. So I did this one time with a client and we had the negative emotion on the board. And what he realized was the ideal prospect that he thought was gonna be the easiest to get at had the most connections to the negative um, emotion. And then there was this other guy way over here that he was like, wow, I didn't even know he has a real pain point that I can solve immediately that has some government requirements attached to it. And he had no connections to any pain points. So it's a really powerful method to put it all in three dimensions and say, okay, these guys fit this, this guy fits this, and you know, she's not really being one-upped by a competition. You don't really have competition if you're a member organization. You may be competing for funds, right, and raising uh, non-member dues, but you're not really competing with anybody else. So this is a stronger pain point for this guy. Fed up is interesting. She's fed up with her board and her volunteers. He's fed up with his marketing that's not working. So again, a really powerful three-dimensional method to get to what are the pain points that my clients are dealing with. Then you can go to how do I solve them, right? So if you can identify the pain points and you can talk to people about how you solve them, and I don't have my... Yeah, I do. So for this guy, I get, I'm going to get him out of this busy office to a place where he can focus and he has more clarity and we can help him develop clarity on what his business needs to grow, develop strategies for growth and uncover either hidden problems or hidden revenue streams, right? So I'm going to get him out of the office and now this is my benefit, right? We're going to help him develop strategies for growth uncover hidden problems that may be holding him back or unidentified revenue streams and gain clarity on what his business needs to grow, right? So these are benefits that are directly talking to problems. They're not just these random benefits that are out there that are like, oh yeah, we're a facilitated method of problem solving communication, blah, 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 that nobody knows what it means, right? So, um, so then if you bring this all together, um, this is my marketing, right? This is a big, I, it's like a big billboard. This is what you do when you, in marketing, you stand up and you tell everybody what you do. So at Optimize Marketing, we use Lego Serious Play, oops, to help clients gain clarity on what their business needs to grow. Now there is my ultimate elevator pitch. Took a long time to get there, took some, few times going through this, but here's my simplified elevator pitch. We use Lego Serious Play to help clients gain clarity on what their business needs to grow, period. So for me, a lot of it is about clarity. My business owners are overwhelmed and they can't see the forest for the trees a lot of times. So getting them out of the office and helping them understand what they need is a big help. So then if you, that's all the fun stuff, now you get really kind of anal. And if you want, I have a whole marketing team, so I have to communicate these, this messaging. So we have this architecture. This governs what we say to whom and where we say it. You've got your three pain points. Each pain point should have a solution. And this is just a snapshot of everything. I mean, we have some pretty big spreadsheets governing all this, but if you really want to break it all down and use what you've learned to guide your marketing messaging, 
This is what we call a messaging architecture, where we pull all this together and say, OK, how do we communicate this to our clients? Then, of course, you have to figure out where your clients are. But that's a whole other thing. So anyway, that's kind of the end of my presentation on how to develop a marketing strategy.